So if you are giving a lightning talk, it's really handy if you're close to the front because your time starts as soon as the last person finishes. So you've got to use that time to do your plugins and setups. Okay. So does someone want a time for me? Just while I'm, I'm going to I'm going to do the first one as an example. Six twelve. What's up? Six twelve. Six. No, no, no. Don't tell me the time. Time for me. Okay, I'll time you. I've got a minute. Uh, in true lightning talk tradition, I've got a beer in a bit. Alright, I'll, I'll time myself. Do you mind talking about beer? How to drink a beer. How to drink a beer. Uh, pick you up. You lose food. Alright, so we'll get this started. Um, if someone else can keep track of the time a little bit alongside me in case my iPhone goes on to whatever it goes on to, you know, locking the screen, um, that would be handy. So let me know as soon as it hits five minutes and then I'm going to let the next person know it's actually, that's going to be Joey. He's going to be up next. So you can time for me and you're going to be up at five. Alright, right, so yep, you tell me when to go. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about GitHub and how to use GitHub and the features that it's got. A couple of guys requested that I talk about it, so I thought I'd give it a quick run through. So basically, the website, if you're not aware, is github.com, nice and easy to remember. Um, what I want to do is show you some of the cool features that it has built in for doing things like pull requests and uh, managing it for people sending you pull requests and sending pull requests to other people. So I see here that um, Jose has made a change to Mongo Cake, so I'm, I'm going to I'm going to fork that. Um, I've already got a fork. There you go. So a fork is like a, a copy, basically, and you can make changes on your fork, and then you can submit them back to the original, the parent fork. Um, so you've got a couple of um, access, I guess, types. You've got SSH, HTTP, and Git read only. Um, I'm going to use SSH because I'm right back. So. I'm going to, I'm not going to talk about Git so much, just GitHub, so, so I'm going to find the project, and hopefully it doesn't take too long, um, it should be relatively quick. Okay, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a change on my fork. What I'll first need to do is, because oh, it's an old fork, I need to update it, why not? Uh, Git, oh, okay. I'm running out of time. <laughs> So what I'm doing, I'm just going back to the original fork. I'm going to add Jose's original one and do an update. And I'll have to merge any changes that he's done into mine. So, okay. Hopefully not too many changes. Jose, you made too many changes wherever you are. Down there, I see you. All right, so I'm, going to, uh, I'm on master, git, merge, Jose master. All right, so I'm gonna push that back. Okay, so it's all up to date. I've just updated from Jose's back into my repository and I've pushed the updates. And then I'm gonna have a quick look and, uh, okay, so he's got a readme here. Um, okay, so this one here, like you need the data source, you need a server, you also need to specify a database. So it should say like, you know, my database. So just helping out the docs. Um, so I'm going to save that and then commit the change. Uh, so I'm pushing it back to my branch, uh, my master branch in GitHub, and so I'll go, I'll go back to my branch. Uh, let's just make sure that it's got there. Okay. Okay. So my commit is there. And I'm actually going to send a pull request. So it goes back to Jose. And um, database um, config update for readme. Added using option. Very simple. So I'm sending a pull request. So a pull request is saying to Jose that um, I've made an update to the Mongo Cake plugin. And he can actually merge it in from the UI on GitHub. 
So he should see that on his account now. Um, I can't actually show. Um, oh, I actually have right access to his plugin, so I could merge it myself if I wanted to. But um, what I'll do is I'll go to say, for example, to show you the other side what the owner of the repository sees. I sent you a pull request. On what? On on your take model. I'm going to use the data sources one because there's some from the community already. We've got seven pull requests. Okay, so I'm a little bit behind on this one. Um, Sorry? Oh crap, I'm going back to the other one. <laughs> Alright, so I have, oh no, 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 that's not mine. Oh, running, so, time, yeah, yeah. Alright, yeah, so I've got a pull request from the other Jose. Um, pull this in please, that's not very helpful. So, you know, you can click through to it and read what it is. Um, really, really <laughs> stupid commit messages. I love them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> read through. <laughs> Full margin. Where's, where's the button? Go back. 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 Go Oh, okay. So, um, this this is really stupid. <laughs> it's a demo. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Time. Okay, Joey's turn. Yeah, you can make that. I'm starting your time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quick before I start, um, Lotus put up Cake Fest tweets, and we were giving away a Kindle and two iTunes gift cards um, on a random draw, and we're not affiliated with the Cake Fest or Cake PHP Foundation or the uh, conference, and the winners were uh, Paul, Vaughn. Not very happy with that. <laughs> so congratulations, guys. I've already handed out those prizes mostly. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, now here's my talk. Uh, more dynamic binds. Um, so we already know of the existing uh, convenience methods uh, in the DB or on the model, uh, find by some field which would return the find first, conditioned by the sum field, uh, or find all which would return find all conditioned by that field. And uh, I responded to a KQ's question where somebody was wanting more of these convenience methods or asked if there was a way to create them. Um, my answer to him was to use map methods on behaviors where you can have a regular expression and any call on the model that matches that regular expression that doesn't already have a method created will make a call to method to call. Uh, from this I created the dynamic find behavior which adds a few extra convenience methods like <coughs> find field by another field uh, in that case, it would just return the title, the first title for the user ID supplied. Uh, there's three different types. So you can do find first, uh, find all title by user ID, which would return similar to a find all, but with the fields array specified for just the title field. And then find list title by user ID, which would return the same thing but a list. Um, because it makes more grammatic sense, uh, some uh, also allow for the by to be switched out for for. Um, second parameter can be passed along with the condition to do all the additional uh, 
normal find parameter. Um, it works with both Cake 1.3 and Cake 2.0. Uh, just got to check out the 2.0 branch. Um, add it to your model as acts as. Oh, forgot to update the 2.0 version. So that one for 2.0 is wrong. <laughs> Uh, some caveats with map methods in 1.3, the second parameter to your method will be the method that was called on the model, uh, but it, is, it comes through as all lowercase, so if you're relying on any uh, I don't know, camel case to do run through an inflector, uh, that won't work. And also for both 1.3 and 2.0, the regular expression matching is case insensitive. So that good bite in the ass. Uh, that's me, and that's Lotus. That's all. tell you how to use it because uh, I know it's a major source of confusion and actually I would say a lot of people who use it really don't need to use it. Um, the reason being that um, the two things it does um, which cause a lot of problems or confusion are um, it stores permissions in the database um, which for a lot of applications is unnecessary. If, you've, if you don't have customizable dynamic permissions you may as well put it in an array or something. Uh, secondly uh, it has a tree structure, both on the ACO side and on the arrow side, so if you're linking users to arrows, it means every time you insert a new user, you're shuffling your tree around and creating records that you might, you might not need at all. So um, we were using it for quite a long time, and um, I got thinking that we could do something much simpler. So um, what we're using at the moment um, is, uh, we, we are using the database because we have customizable permissions. Um, this is a fixture file with um, simple, simply a list of uh, CRUD operations for each model, so account CRUD, um, annotation CRUD, etc. Um, then we have another table which is permission assigned. Oh, that's a flat table, no tree, so you can't inherit permissions from, you can't assign access to a whole collection that it makes other things inherit, okay? Um, a linking table that defines a polymorphic relationships so something can access this, something has this permission. If the record is present, it has this permission. So group 7 has permission 310, for instance. This is a little bit unusual. We have a kind of permission routing system. So, for instance, anything, any, uh, this first part is controller action. So any controller index maps to a model read in terms of CRUD. Um, there's some specific routing, so resources set thumbnail, I've mapped that directly to resource update. So the, the reason being that we don't need anything more than CRUD, but every single action is accounted for and somehow mapped to a CRUD operation. Um, a few specific ones here that anything, view discussions, maps to discussion, and yeah, support some wildcards. Um, in before filter, we simply say we convert the controller and action to a permission alias via that map, and then we say simple permission, require permission, current user, that permission alias. And an exception is thrown and caught, um, which would be nicer in Cake 2 when we upgrade, we can throw a 403 exception or something. Um, and that's all. I just wanted to say there is another way. and. Uh, 
about the uh, right way to time keeper in Japan. Now, time keeper is Japan. Oh, it is key. Japanese time, at the right way time keeper is Kanfuga. You know Kanfuga? Kanfuga uh, brings the China beer. <laughs> this image comic is this. Please listen. This is Japanese right wing talks. That's final. Where is the bear? Says. False exit. Like a Japanese pop character? They are called Dora Musume. Musume is a uh, daughter. Like a, this. this. This is Dora. Dora is a Chinese, Chinese symbol. This. Like this. Like this. Like this. Like this. Baby? <laughs> Baby? <laughs> Baby? <laughs> Baby? <laughs> oh! Was paper drums fun? You, you, <laughs> no drums may not empty. It is no problem if any drums may you in your right wing talks. This is Android application. <laughs> uh, name is DoraGuard. Uh, you can download Android Market. This is timer. Of course, you will uh, able to match me, your Musume. Uh, you come to Japan on PHP Matsuri. Great. Oh, thank you. Both of us. You just lost 15 seconds. Six slides. Um, who here has had to generate a PDF file from your PHP application? Pretty much every single thing that generates PDF files from HTML files suck. Um, WK HTML to PDF also sucks, but it sucks less than most of them. 
So the simplest way to generate one is to use an HTML PDA converter, because we all know how to write HTML. Um, there's a number of them available that run a PHP, DOM PDF, PDF, PDF um, and lots of others that I don't know. Lots of them have lots of weird bugs all trying to rehash HTML renderers, and they are rather slow. Um, WK HTML to PDF is a um, command line tool that uses WebKit to render an HTML file. Um, I think it's largely CSS3 compatible. Um, there's binaries available for various systems you can download it from there. I wrote a simple view class for WK HTML to PDF that you can get from my GitHub account. Um, I haven't really had a chance to, to, to properly work on it, but it does work. This doesn't throw any huge horrible errors. Um, basic usage in your controller action, you just set the view class to wkhmlpdf.wkhmlpdf. In your actual view, um, there's an options array that, that's attached to the, to the view object. Um, you can set various things you can set the orientation, file, um, page size, file name it must output to the user, um, rendering mode, there is download. Um, forces down there, there's embed for embedded in the browser, and there's also a mode where you can ask it to save it to a file for you. Um, and then you standard view code like you normally do, standard layout file like you normally do. Um, as soon as I get home and have a proper computer in front of me, I'll write some real documentation and test, test cases for it. Yeah, it works quite well. Um, there's basic stuff uh, you can get from Google Code for the actual library. Um, you get my plugin from there and just my Twitter IRC video. Okay. Mark's story. It's gonna be fun. How do I get the docs for 2.0? So I'm going to show you. Oh, it's all the top. We're going to waste some time. Can people see that? So we basically clone. Clone the docs repo, which contains a bunch of plain text files. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 go. All right, so then when you're done, there's a direction where you've already got a clone, and it looks a little bit like this. There's some stuff. There's some English, so the directories are en, es, pt, so we don't have any Spanish docs, because I just made that directory. And there's some PT docs, so some contributors have sent some Portuguese docs. There's static templates, build, and config, which are very simple. When you run the build, it puts the files in the build directory. So basically, you can run make HTML. But before that, you have to install a couple things. So you do easy install Sphinx. And this will take zero time, because they've already installed. If you don't have easy install installed, you have to install Python and then install Easy Install. There's a like a bash script you download and you exec it, and then it installs Easy Install. And then you can Easy Install things. But I don't like Easy Install. You can also use pip. And then you have to install one other thing, which is the PHP, the Sphinx, PHP domain. And what this is is a library I wrote for Sphinx to make. Oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> It's a bottle trolling with you, me, Percy. 
<laughs> All right, I think that's what the line is, but I don't actually know. Speaks uh, and trip. Hmm? It's, it speaks and trip. Oh, right. I wrote it. I don't even know what it is. Um, so there you go. Boom, it's done. Um, it might take a little bit longer on your machine. And what that is is it's a Sphinx extension for compiling, uh, searching through the special PHP tags, and making links. And then basically you type make HTML. This will also run really fast because it's on my computer and I've already done it. If you're on Windows, there's a make uh, .bat file that should work. Um, there, it's done, yay! And then you can basically go up here, go to localhost. If it's in a web accessible directory, you can go to localhost, take docs, and then build HTML. And you get three directories, one for English, one for Spanish, and one for Portuguese. And then you go to the new docs. And they're all built on your computer. And you can search. You can even use grep to search the docs. So let's say you wanted to find something. You can just do ack, because ack is better than grep. Uh, controller, and then. Just like that. Just like that. There you go. That's fast. That was fast. Yeah, ack is really good. Um, there's also search on the docs, obviously. Um, yeah, so you can search. Mm -hmm. The docs are also available at <coughs> two online. So we'll be rebuilding them once in a while as they get updated. Um, contributing to the docs is really easy. You make a fork on GitHub. You can even edit it online because it's just a really simple plain text file, and you just hit save. Um, we're pretty good about merging in uh, docs, so if you want to help, please help. That's it. Some of the stuff that it includes is uh, to IP location. So you can see there it says Qualcomm, North Logging Mode from Manchester, all that kind of stuff. And then at the top is the core stuff. On the bottom is some plugins that are extra, not part of the core. So the plugin stuff is like everything's done in the back end, so it'll be easy for the client to use the system. Uh, there's routing, everything like that. <coughs> like, there's a page for managing routes that works exactly like um, the normal routes file. It takes the same arguments and it's tested and works exactly like as if it was in the PHP file. Um, then we've got um, a whole plugin system for managing plugins, installing them, and you can now actually enable and disable plugins from the from the back end. So if we had a look here, um, on the front, there's a uh, no gallery plugin, but it is actually like installed there on its tip. And in the source of the page, there is not like
there's no CSS JavaScript or anything that's loaded there. But you can just um, click the switch. The gallery plug is now back on. And if we have a look at the the CSS and everything's been included. So if that's like the whole event system and stuff that I was talking about, it does not. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff, ideas to provide something really awesome for developers, not like WordPress, if anyone's ever tried to hack that stuff up. Um, so there's a bunch of shells and stuff as well, apart from the cake stuff, and some stuff from the community, like the clear cache plugin. But, um, we have things, there's a installer which does this, you can install from the front end and from the shell, everything, you can install new plugins, so if you did that, you can like update, install from the zip file, install over the AS coming, which will be like from GitHub or something, and then like locally, you can just point to a path. Um, then there's a release part, which is for like if you're developing and you want to release something, so you can do stuff like this and get a status on your, your database. So this will show you, I got, um, made one change on the, a few changes on the database. It shows like there's a plugin that needs to be updated. Um, these ones are not installed. These ones here have um, changes to the schema that need to be committed into the repository. And the ones at the bottom are, don't have any changes. And then, there's like a cron dispatcher. So you can set up one single cron job. Just type click cron help. It gives you the line to put in the cron dispatcher. I just put it in now. But I haven't actually checked if it's working. And time. Yeah, spring. He's already here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've been looking at my screen, haven't you? <laughs> Alright, I'm going to talk about varnish. I usually need 10 minutes to do that talk, so I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do it. I'll just talk really fast. Oh yeah, I forgot. I need 7 minutes to hook up the map. <laughs> <laughs> the tech display is good to your display preferences and quick detect. I'll just pull it out, put it in again. Okay, varnish. So, this is the intro I usually do. We, we did a UEFA mobile site at the previous place I was working, and I did the estimation in dollars there, and then multiplied it by pi. And then we realized what really was to do, so we had to transform XML, and it kind of went berserk and everything fucked up, and in the end we had like that reality, and through varnish, which we put in front, we kind of managed to have it only lose double them. Anyway, varnish, uh, it makes uh, websites fly, and it's a reverse proxy. Anyone knows what a proxy is? Goodies, so a proxy is something you put uh, in between your computer and where you want to go. You can use it kind of to cache or to censor people so they can watch you porn at work. Then you have the anonymizer proxy, so you can watch porn at work again. And you have the local proxy, which you can use to debug. And Varnish is a reverse proxy, so what it is, it's that this stuff is in the local network. So uh, the, between the proxy and, and uh, the actual server. Uh, you usually use it to do some SSL, for example, if you don't want to do it on your application machine or the compression or have it as a load balancer, etc., etc., and caching, which Varnish does. So you get a request uh, for news. News gets through. Uh, so this is the, the public facing machine, right, in the internet. So I want news. News goes back to, you, uh, to, to your application server. You get a 200 back. And uh, with the application, uh, with the site, and it gets sent back to the client with a cache control of uh, 600 max age. Next one comes along. What does a get request? And the thing is cached, and it's sent back immediately. So this uh, this one took up to 30 seconds because of the crappy backend that generated XML, and this just instantly. So that's really cool. Wow. So. Um, 
what happens in the beginning, if you have uh, the first hit, what's really cool is that it won't let through everything, it just lets through one. And then when that one comes back, it sends you everything back. Which was good because at the UEFA, we had that big, at the beginning of the match, they opened the sides and then bam, everyone comes along and the server wouldn't have any problem with that. Thank you very much. Next, uh, if you come back, if, if suddenly like you have 600 seconds where the, the, the full page is cached and suddenly the cache is, uh, is, is devalidated so you have to get it again, what it does is that it, in, you have the grace mode where it continues to serve the old stuff for maybe 10 or 15 more seconds so that it can easily get back and no one notices that you have that problem. Uh, next, you could get back a, a 500 there and you have the same mode which you can configure and so it continues to send the old stuff out. Say, we say for five minutes, if we have backend problems, please send out. That was because the UFO uh, servers went down regularly and that helped us a lot. Then you have God mode, it's not implemented yet. <laughs> then you have ES, ESI includes, who knows what ESIs are, edge side includes. That's a thing that was developed by Akamai. You just put these tags into your HTML and it caches everything except that tag which it will get back. So for example, you have a username on the page, but everything else you can cache. So it will cache everything except the username and send, send the things back, uh, get a request for the user, inject it into the cache page and send it back. Really nice. Install is done with a one-liner, uh, no, uh, with a one-liner in the packager, one line to run, and uh, you use Varnish query language. It took me two hours to learn about it and have it in production. It's really, really, really simple. Things you can do with it is uh, with the Varnish, Varnish query, uh, configure language, configuration languages, define things about cookies and ACLs, the grace and saint mode, and all these other things. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'm from Istanbul, Turkey. I built a plugin for CakePHP. It's uh, called Configurate, and it's quite like a system restore on uh, Windows, like Windows system restore for CakePHP. You can back up the database if you don't use the uh, version control systems like me. Uh, you can back up the database. You can back up config folder. And you can edit core PHP and roots PHP from web form. It translates the text file and generates a web form, and you can edit directly without opening text mail and trying to find all these files. And you can too many things to add. It's a very basic uh, plugin. Uh, you can like adding new roots. You can normally and uh, now you can edit the roots, but you cannot add new. And just write configurate cake page on Google. You can see me. I'm Google Kochak. I'll show you my uh, very, very basic uh, plugin. Uh, here you can uh, open and edit core configuration uh, with using this web port. It's, it's directly generated from the, the file without opening it. Uh, and so, root configuration. I use uh, PHP's inner parsers uh, to create this system. And you can uh, generate and create this, uh, edit this root PHP. And you can also, if you click here, you can back up SQL into a file. Uh, you have SQL backups here. And you can recover directly. And you can uh, copy and uh, save your configuration folder into a uh, zip file and uh, you can recover uh, manually and that is, that's all yeah and you can uh, look to github and you find uh, using this uh, google keywords yeah that's all Log out of IRC, log out of Twitter at the 
email. Just shut it down and talk. I've got slides specifically for you if you put some of that Okay. Okay. was going to be about the technology behind this game, but I decided that I'm going to start with the demo. <coughs> and in order to make it a little bit interesting, I want to invite everyone to join. And whoever wins the race gets a free beer. So you can enter the URL there, playbossman.com slash play slash skatefest. The objective is to, to just run across this little thing uh, using the uh, arrow keys, jump with the space, and get to the other side. And if you wait, you get a free beer. <coughs> what if there's a tie? What's that? What if there's a tie? It's extremely uh, There's impossible to, uh, there's no way to be a tie. It's never saturated. Oh my god. My name is. Is it still Tom Yellow? Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm using Nino. Oh, no, it's slow. You should use Rackspace. Uh, yeah, that, that's cheap. Oh, there's people joining there. Hey, hey, who started? <laughs> okay, yeah. There are like three people. People running, what the fuck? Come back, man. Who is that? <laughs> Who do you think it is? Like, I don't yes. know. <laughs> <laughs> you were born on the uh, I'm not winning. Okay, I'm losing the game. And exactly. Whoever loses gets two beer. <laughs> I can't get in. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> This is a job, you just keep going, doesn't it? <laughs> what yes, it's a flying open. I won. It says I won. You won. Wait, it shows me I won. No, I didn't get a screenshot. Best game ever. Everybody wins. I did. I won. There's no beer. That's a lot of beers. It's like 40 beers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I never said I was a man of my Today words. We all drink <laughs> As Jose, I do owe him a beer. So. <laughs> okay, but you want to say, if you, if you want to find out how I did this, just ask me after. You know. What are you Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> That's me, sorry. Okay. Guys. Time. Okay, I'm first of all, I think you're going to be a 
the air to the left. This one, you know, show a little love. Just press that icon. No, it's not that. It's not that. I don't know what happened with that. Oh, there you go. It's everywhere. I'm from Ghana. Windows? Anybody know how to get Windows to show us? Yeah, just press a bunch of apps. Oh, right. You need to upgrade to Mac. Yeah. Oh, and then it just works. Maybe broke it. Something happened. Oh, hey, 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 okay. Uh, oh, it's up there. Funny things to do. Mess with coworkers. Uh, you probably heard a lot of these, but if you haven't, it's good fun. Um, you can set their screensaver to blue screen. Uh, something funny, especially, is good. Uh, like we've deleted all your files, please restart now. Um, change the DNS for commonly used sites. That's a good one. Uh, you can change all browser icons to open Internet Explorer. <laughs> uh, install a blue. Oh, I did that one already. Uh, you can put IP checks in your headers. That's always fun. So that if your building has a single IP, you can put IP check in your header and then display like an alternate version of your site that's really bad or has pictures of your coworkers or something. Um, we actually did that with my boss and put him on a, it was a public information site. We put him as the drunk driver example image. Um, uh, Photoshop full screen. If you haven't seen this before, uh, oh, I don't, this is a fun one. Um, you can let's see if it's still there. You can print screen your background and then go into Photoshop. Uh, paste your background. Maybe. Well, okay. The concept is you paste your background, hit tab and F, and then actual pixels, and it will look like their desktop. But you can keep it, <laughs> you can keep it on like the blur tool or something. And if they don't use Photoshop or if they're not familiar with something like that, they won't know how to get out. Um, <laughs> comment every line of code. Uh, clear nail clear nail polish on their pens and pencils at the end. Um, it, won't, it won't let the pens or pencils write. That's always fun. So we'll try all the pens and pencils. Um, print out, please use other door signs and tape them on all the doors. <laughs> when they're out, leave a phone message that says Mr. Leon or Lion uh, called and has a few questions and then leave the number to the local zoo. <laughs> uh, this is a, you gotta be careful, you gotta know the person, but borrow their car keys, make copies, and then shift, it, shift their car over one or two spots, you know, when they're away. <laughs> or put it, pull it in reverse, you know. Or, um, we did this one, pop up like their M and N keys, or two similar keys next to each other, and switch them on the keyboard. And it will, they won't notice, because you don't usually look at your keyboard, but when you're up real late or real early, it screws you up really bad. <laughs> um, uh, change their email signature. That's fun, but you gotta be a little careful. But uh, yeah, you can have fun with that one. Um, wrap a lot of your code in just lines like this. <laughs> if, if true, something, something. Uh, and then lastly, just some funny comments that I found. No comments for you. It's hard to write, so it should be hard to read. Uh, drunk, drunk, fix later. This one's good. John, if you if you SVN remove this once more, I'll shut you. For God's sake, that piece of code was not something strange. That was the off bell. <laughs> You're not expected to understand this. When I wrote this, only God and I understood what I was doing. Now it's God. No, God. <laughs> uh, magic, do not touch, and I have to find a better job. That's all. Just fun thing. So I'm going to go ahead and start talking as I'm hooking this up because what I am uh, going to talk about has to do with attending events like this and 
one of the things that you want to be careful of, especially when you got somebody walking around with the camera all the time. Um, I didn't do this to embarrass anybody specifically. <laughs> That's unfortunate. And yes, it is unfortunate, but um, I do got to put up a few warnings and everything that. Some of the following images may be disturbing. All right. Your discretion is advised. So when you come to an event, most people, when they first attend or show up at an event, have a real nice, happy, smiley face, everything, and then they look like this. <laughs> All right, or like this. Okay. Now, come on, guys, you, you you can't be doing this. I mean, first day. Oh, look at that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> what, what is going on here? All right. Look, oh, there. That ain't so bad, though. That ain't, that ain't so bad. But simple advice for attending conferences, okay? Get a razor. <laughs> Learn how to use it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I put some slides up here to show you guys, okay? Even, I, I can print this out for you too. I mean, if you need extra, you know, things like you carry, you can fold it in your pocket. I could actually print it so it would be book size, and each one of those would open up for you. So if you like that, I could, uh, I could do that. And, and and the last thing I have to say is, if you're going to be bogey, try to at least match. <laughs> okay. That's it. Yes, yes, thank you. I would like to do the stuff. Yes. Can we walk away with the adapter? Larry, do you, did you take the adapter with you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 you I'm all the time way slowly. That's what I did. How is this thing? So that, that tells us what line it's on, right, in the file. Um, it can get pretty funky once you start uh, jumping into anonymous functions and whatnot and trying to find out where, like, what's happening, especially if you're in someone else's library. Um, so what you can do to make this even more helpful is um, you can grab something called xdebug. You can use peckle to install it, which I will do. Um, if you're on Windows, you can download a binary. Uh, um, if you're really awesome, you can download the source and uh, compile it yourself. But pretty easy. Just sudo peckle, peckle install <coughs> xdebug. Hopefully no one's stealing all our internet. How much time do you have? Sweet. 
or not. It's <laughs> awesome. Well, all right. Cool. That was going super fast, actually. Um, you'll have to have Xcode download to actually use this. Yeah, let's just download that on a gig. <laughs> That'll be fine. So this will run through. It'll compile it. Um, I could jump into just setting up editing our uh, PHP any, but I think we can go full stop. Oh, no, maybe not. All right. here to the extension, copy that, save that, override it. We start our web server. Let's go check out that error now. Sweet. So here we have our call stack, the lines. Um, we can actually make this a little better. Time. Oh. <laughs> So this is going to be real quick. Uh, this is lightning talk just to announce you that it is already available, the version 2.0 RC1. This is our first release candidate. And I think we're going to make through a very short process of RCs. Uh, we've already test uh, a lot since beta. So we're accepting pull requests only for bugs, no more features. And we're ready to announce to that we called successfully Jenkins or KPHP. So we're now able to see our progress on the project in terms of failing or successful test cases. So that's it. Hey. <laughs> So I was going to talk about I don't know what. So I thought, well, I, I take photographs a lot all the time. I go everywhere with my either SLR or my iPhone. And I thought, well, there is something there that um, sort of touches all of us, which is brand. And uh, we've been talking about IDs and technology and how we do this and how we do that and all of that. So I just came up, well, let's go through my pictures and see how I can explain this. So brands, uh, you know, you need to stand out from the crowd. You know, uh, everywhere you go, there are a lot of similar things. 
you know, um, no religious connotation there. I just found it, uh, took that picture somewhere. And, um, and you can be slightly different. You can change your colors, um, try different things. Otherwise, it's death of the brand. And people get confused. You know, they don't know what to do, um, what they're looking for, um, but that's a door. Having the right brand is the door to your audience, somewhere you can reach out and reach the sky. Um, I don't know, I just like that program. So, back to Skylight. <laughs> <laughs> so Skylight, we went through a lot of fonts, trying to figure out which one was good, um, which one wasn't. We couldn't decide. This is somewhere um, we do our UI and design and interface. You know, I draw it out, sketch it out, take our phone pictures, send it to um, everyone in the team, and uh, then we discuss it, have arguments over it. And we finally decide, after a lot of hard work and coding, um, we sort of have happy developers, and uh, very happy developers. Um, but the thing is that you have to look at the brand through the eyes and magnifying glass from how your audience is going to perceive it. That's my cat, Pepper. The thing is, brand stands out. These are, by the way, all the pictures I've taken out again. Um, and, you know, <laughs> Where's this going? <laughs> you know, I got your attention there, right? Uh, the thing is, the audience can't hold it together when they, you know, <laughs> strong brand. They will follow you. They'll go everywhere with you if you've got the right brand. And uh, that's the last uh, design that we settled on. And I think that is the last slide. I'm missing one actually. Anyways, so that's all I had to say, guys. I really thank you. Thank you. That was actually the last one. Oh, I thought you yeah. were going to do I can do another one. Give me a topic. Anything? Anything. Give me one second, I need to get myself organized. This is not time, by the way. This one is not being fun. So I hope everyone enjoyed the lightning talks. I think they were pretty fun. Uh, I think everyone had a good time. I know I did. You know, even though you know there were some silly commits pushed across. But that's fine. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for coming to Cake Fest 2011. It's been a massive turnout, and we've had heaps of good fun, plenty of good talks, and excellent workshops. Um, I just, you know, it's amazing to be able to meet all these people. Um, you know, people that haven't been able to make it to the U.S. You know, local region and people from all over the world. It really has been excellent. So, just thanks very much for coming, everyone. So. Okay, that's not working, so I wanted to show our sponsors, um, but we've got, I'm going to have to go from memory now, I'm normally going off slides and I don't have to remember things, that's awesome, uh, but we've got the Cake Development Corporation, um, who uh, Diamond Sponsors, we've got Big Click, uh, they were Silver Sponsors, we have, um, oh goodness me, Microsoft who did a dinner for us, um, an excellent dinner, you know, we got the DJ sorted out a little bit late, I think, you yeah. know, no more Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thanks to Microsoft for that, um, sorting out the beer and whatnot. Um, Rackspace, I'd like to mention, for the hosting that they're doing for us. Uh, it's, it's brilliant to be able to have these servers at our disposal. And uh, Loadsys uh, for their support and sponsorship as well. So just a big thank you to our sponsors. <laughs> Sunny side.
and center soft. Right, See, that, neck. I've got it around my neck. <laughs> so I should have read off that, I'm afraid. Uh, so center soft who have sponsored us for a number of years and they've really been uh, very supportive even though I can't remember everything. Um, I am going to try and get my laptop working again because we've got this um, awesome PlayStation up the back that was really no use to anyone back at the Tech Software Foundation, so we're going to give that away. Um, we're going to do nothing if it continues to do this. Um, so we're going to do a random draw, we're going to do the same thing that we did for the iPad the other night, the same little PHP script run through and fix people at random. Um, and we're going to give that away. So. I'm just rebooting. Can I sit here? You can sit there. Oh, thank you. Does anyone have any last minute like questions about KPHP, the Case Software Foundation, any of the sponsors, any of the event, anything at all? Something to fill my time while I'm up here. Any questions or comments about the event? If there's anything you can think we can improve, then I know the room allocation is one that we do need to uh, improve for the next event. But if there's any other suggestions that you may have, What's the enemy? Uh, we didn't say California, no. Um, yeah, yeah. The rumor going around. Yeah, you said being <laughs> accessory. <laughs> I said West Coast. Yeah. yeah, so what we've said is West Coast USA for next year, and we're sort of looking at options for cities. So the two top ones that I guess we're considering, or at least I'm considering, um, are the. <coughs> It's uh, Los Angeles, not Las Vegas. Um, Lo Lo Los, Angeles. Los Angeles and San Francisco. So I think uh, hitting, hitting those two, especially after the response we had at the Los Angeles PHP user group, we had uh, over 100 people there, and just there for the, the PHP talks that we did. So the response was huge, and I really think taking it there will see us, uh, you know, a nice big uh, group of people yeah, attending. There you go, we've got one vote. <laughs> um, I think you're close as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah, there's plenty of people uh, in that area. Any other comments at all? That you want to... Larry has a comment. Yeah. How, how many people would like us to, to see us come back here? <coughs> come back where? Back to Manchester. Back to Manchester. Back to Manchester. Back to Manchester. Yeah. All right. That's, that's enough. That's, that's enough of a show of hands for me. Just to you. <coughs> Someone got a power adapter that can get me real quick? Amsterdam. 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 So if anyone's sticking around after this, I'm going to be having a few beers, not too many. I've got to drive Larry to the airport later, but I'll be having a couple of beers at the bar. So feel free to hassle me about anything that's come up in my chat, whatever. Oh, don't look in there. Yeah, no beer. I will say that the PlayStation that we're giving away is um, it's region locked, and I'm not sure what the UK region is for the two. two? Yeah. Okay, so it's region two. If it's not useful to you, um, let us know. Like, if you can, we don't have another PlayStation we can get for you for the right region. But if it's no use to you um, and you don't want it, let us know. We can redraw. Uh, it's probably best to go to someone that's going to be useful to. So, <laughs> or I can just get another one in that region and then draw this one out for this region. But we'll only do that one time. Okay, so do we have a microphone? That one right there, pick it up. Really? Yeah. I'm going to have to put the laptop up to it. Bendy. 
That's what she said. That's what I've been saying all week, yeah? Sorry, Craig. Alright, let's try this. No! Oh, Larry Masters, what is that? Hey! I gotta buy myself one then. Okay, well, quick edit. Everyone's name is in there. Make a winner. We want a new line. Cool. Uh, so I'm just gonna show it on the screen then. Make it real big. Kim? I don't think I saw Kim actually come. Name was here, but I think they left. All oh, right. Okay. We'll do it again. We got Rafael. Oh, there we go. Still here. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> so, do you know what time you're leaving? Uh, I'm leaving tomorrow. Leaving tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. So, for the moment, I'll shake your hand. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation's at the back. We need to unhook it all. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks. So, come and grab me. Thanks very much. So that's it for Cake Fest 2011. Thanks again very much for coming, and um, thanks for your time.